Today, once more, they will replenish themselves, cheat death again, through the power of their source. Matt Stone, 180DegreeHealth.com Hey, Matt Stone from 180 Degree Health. And just a quick video tonight because it's late, but... Um, I've been playing around with this concept for a long time and it just keeps evolving and evolving with my own understanding as I sort of go along with it. But about a year ago, I first started paying attention to the concentration of the urine and how significant that was. I had no idea, was completely unaware of this connection prior to about a year ago. And now, over the last year, after initially seeing how significant it was, I've sort of built upon my understanding of, of what it all means and also how to manipulate it. Um, so for example, when we eat foods that are very high water content, like let's say you wake up for breakfast and you have a big bowl of watermelon and also next to that a big bowl of watery oatmeal and a tall glass of milk or juice or something like that, an hour later you're going to be freezing cold and urinating frequently, at least if you have any kind of a metabolic issue or low metabolism. I think really what's going on here is the lower the metabolism, the lower the cellular energy concentration, if that makes sense. So we have salt and sugar in a liquid solution in our cells in the intracellular environment. And I believe that the body, in an, in an attempt to actually keep the metabolic rate reduced, for whatever reason the body is trying to maintain a lower metabolic rate, um, keeps that solution in the cell much more diluted so that it doesn't actually produce energy as well. It's part of the system of maintaining the, the metabolism at a low rate. So it's very, very sensitive and delicate to taking in excess amounts of fluids because when you do take in fluids, particularly fluids that are weaker in concentration than the cell itself, then you just dilute the cell. And then when you dilute the cell beyond you know, the point where it's already at, which is, you know, on the precipice of being completely wiped out of any and all energy, um, then you can get wiped out completely, start urinating clear, have a very acute stress reaction, and have all kinds of symptoms that are related to that. Um, basically, all the symptoms of water intoxication, which would be really acute mood changes, sometimes headache, blurred vision, seizures, migraines, any number of different things. For most people, they're going to notice that they're freezing cold, and then they're also going to notice that um, their mood usually is worse, so their energy levels are altered somehow by that as well. So I've been playing around with it more and more. I noticed that salt was very helpful. I noticed that eating carbohydrates and eating in general was very helpful. Uh, I think most people, when they've gone without food all through the evening, uh, they're more likely to be in that state where they're more diluted and their cellular energy supply has been really wiped out because they haven't eaten any food for 12 hours. So it really takes a lot waking up in the morning to sort of build back that cellular energy supply. Well, I think really what it is, what it all boils down to in terms of rebuilding that low cellular energy supply is taking in something that has a high ratio of calories to fluids. So I was talking to uh, a guy, a gentleman today, for example, who was having chocolate milk for breakfast. And I said, well, you know, it's not too bad, but chocolate milk has what? You know, 250, 300 calories per pint, but a pint of ice cream, the same volume, has almost 1,000 calories, or depending on, you know, the type of ice cream you're eating, sometimes more than 1,000 calories. So you see a higher ratio of calories to water content in something that's more condensed. So sometimes I do have people eating things that are lower water content and that have a lot of calories, very calorie dense with very little water. Uh, along the same lines, just drinking actual water that's completely plain and completely devoid of calories is something that is particularly powerful at preventing you from rebuilding your cell cellular energy supply so that even if you eat a huge quantity of food, it still doesn't have a warming, metabolically stimulating effect if you're taking that that big load of food in with too many fluids it's sort of one step forward and one step back you don't actually increase the concentration of this energy in the cell if you're taking all these fluids in with it so that's really a, a concept to think about now it's also i think the more time i spend with this i think when you're already 
nice and warm and toasty, your metabolism is up, your body temperature is high, the hands and feet are warm, you're feeling good, I think it's actually counterproductive to, in that state, eat foods that have a very, very high calorie density and a very low water content. That's useful to rebuild the cellular energy supply, but probably, I, I'm thinking, can be damaging. And we can talk maybe in a future video about what can happen uh, when you actually go too far with that and you eat that type of food in that type of state. I think your quintessential health foods that are usually high water content and not as calorie dense are probably more appropriate when you're already warm and toasty and the cellular energy concentration is nice and high and full of that salt and sugar. So anyway, that's all for this video. We'll talk more about this kind of subject in the future because like I said, my understanding is always sort of evolving along with it and it's been very, very revealing and very, very interesting physiology lesson over the last year since I stumbled across this. Uh, see you guys in a video soon. Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health. Subscribe to the 180 Degree Health channel now or you will be abducted by lesbian Nazi hookers from outer space and forced into a weight loss program. It doesn't matter what you had for lunch. Just eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it.